Hey guys, welcome back to Surecrest to Success, where I, Randy Vieru, share with you how to achieve professional baker's recipes. Today's recipe is of pata choux or choux pastry. Choux pastry is the batter that is used to make eclairs, choux puffs, or even churros. It is very easy to accomplish at home, and I will show you guys exactly how I do it. It is up to you if you would like to make an eclair or shoe puffs with it. I'm just going to show you guys how to achieve the batter. If this is something that you're interested in, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you do not miss any new recipes. Without further ado, here are the ingredients and the recipe to follow. I'm going to start by melting my butter in my water milk salt and sugar mixture if you're using cold butter it is better if you dice it before you put it in that way it'll melt a lot faster than if it is in a block and if you're using room temperature butter you can just dump it all at the same time now that my mixture is boiling i'm going to add my flour all at once and i'm going to stir vigorously Sometimes people might take this off of the heat. I usually keep it on unless I see that it is burning at the bottom. Then I would lower my heat and I would move it off of the heat to continue mixing. And what I'm doing is I'm just going to cook this on the stove top until I get more of a uniform film at the bottom of the pot or that I form a ball with the dough. This takes about two to three minutes. And you want to keep moving or else you risk burning the bottom and you just won't have a dry enough dough. And I'm still on the medium heat. Now that I have this visible film at the bottom of my pot, I'm going to be moving my dough from the pot to an empty bowl and I'm going to let it rest for a bit before I add my eggs that way I don't cook the eggs as I'm adding them. What I like to do is I like to spread my dough a bit just to release some heat. And if you're doing this recipe using a stand mixer, this would be your stand mixer and you would paddle it until it gets a little bit cooler. I decided to make it by hand because not everyone has a stand mixer, but I still want you to be able to do this and know that it is possible. And here I have my eggs and I also have the vanilla extract. Don't worry, the sugar in here is not going to make it sweet. And the vanilla is just so that you don't get like an eggy texture or an eggy taste to it. You can still use this recipe for savory. You can omit the vanilla if it'll make you feel better, but you won't really taste it. It's just that it'll have a better aroma. All right, we are cool enough. We're still a bit warm. We are at about 125 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to start adding my eggs one at a time. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking my wooden spoon and mixing in my egg. Once the streaks of the eggs are gone, you can add your next egg. So I just break the yolk and then I just mix it in. And it goes pretty fast. But if you have this on the stand mixer, you do the same thing on low. You want this to be on low to medium speed as you're adding your eggs one by one. And you add your eggs once the previous egg is completely mixed in. This is definitely an arm workout, so <laughs> don't try to do this on arms day <laughs> or else that'll be a double workout for you. This is usually when <laughs> You remember that having a stand mixer is great because if you're making larger portions, if you're making larger batches, this 
is definitely hard. And a pro tip is to make sure that your bowl is large enough and also that you have some sort of grip on your countertop. Time for my last egg. After the addition of your fifth egg is when you see if you need to add more eggs to your batter, you may or may not need an extra egg. I'm going to switch to a spatula just so that I can really scrape down the bowl. You always want to make sure that you're scraping your bowl down. No matter what you're making in your bowl. You always want to scrape the bottom and the sides. I'm actually going to add another egg to this mixture. The eggs in here are your leavening agents. So you want to make sure that in order to have a nice puff to your eclair or your shoe puff, you have enough eggs. Here I was trying to explain how you know when the dough is ready and the dough is ready when it is very smooth and silky sort of has a shine to it and also it holds its shape so as you can see on the spatula it makes that V form from the spatula when I pull on it and it also falls onto itself but it doesn't just blend back in if that makes any sense let me know in the comments if you need a little bit more explanation but you want it to be nice and smooth but you don't want it to be pulling too much this is the piping tip that I'm using it is a 15 millimeter round piping tip pro tip if you need to put something into a piping bag grab a cup uh, if you have a large cup like this or if you have just a drinking Collins glass grab your piping tip put it in and then and then twist and push that way when you're filling when you're putting in your filling it doesn't run into the cup and then place it into the cup and open your bag over it There you have it guys, my recipe for shoe pastry. And again, it all depends on how large your eggs are and how dry your batter is before adding your eggs. So in my case, I needed that extra egg, but you may not. And the way that you're going to figure out if you do need or don't need that extra egg is by checking the batter. Using the spatula, as I showed you guys, a couple tips for your batter. You can keep it in the refrigerator in an airtight container for two days after making it if you're not ready to use it or if you've used up a part and you're not ready to use the rest. And if you know that you won't be needing it for those two days, another tip is that you can pipe it in the way that you would like and you can freeze it for when you're ready to use it. I decided to make some chouquette with my choux pastry. This is great for tea time, it is great for breakfast time with your coffee, or you could fill these in and make choux puffs. It is all up to you. I drink a lot of tea so that's why I decided to make some chouquette with mine and I actually froze the rest of my batter. What I usually do is I pipe out my batter and I put it in the freezer and once it's hardened and frozen I take it off from the tray and I put it in freezer bags like this one and you want it to be airtight because if you have something open in your freezer it's just going to absorb all the smells and everything else that's in your freezer so you want to make sure that you put it into a airtight container or in a ziploc bag so as you can see i have some pre-shaped eclairs and i also have some shoe puffs that are ready to go and when you are ready to bake these you can just place them onto your tray and put it into your preheated oven at 375 degrees fahrenheit for 45 minutes then an additional 10 minutes at 400 degrees to dry the center of it out 
turn off your oven and leave them in for 15 minutes and then you can take them out and they will be ready to go. You want them to be nice and golden, that way you know that it is cooked through and they're nice and hollow, that way you can add your filling if you need to. If you have any questions, please make sure to leave them in the comments below. Hopefully this was helpful and you'll be able to use this recipe at home. If you do decide to reproduce this, please make sure to tag me at Success on Instagram. Until next time, cheers.